introduction is of course uh, aditya's so aditya uh, has a phd in robotics uh, more specifically mechatronics right and uh, is working in the dutch high tech industry and he'll be doing an ama and you know help you folks understand what uh, what doing a uh, high uh, specialization in in robotics is like how is it working in uh, in uh, netherlands how is it working in europe what is the scenario there etc uh, and how his uh, you know kind of uh, work life uh, looks like <laughs> as opposed to maybe uh, elsewhere i mean uh, yeah and and uh, you know you'll hear him speak soon so i'll do a little correction i don't have a phd in mechatronics i have something called a pdn which is a professional doctorate in engineering so it's it's a specialized dutch uh, program which is uh, considered at the same scale education level as a phd but uh, it's uh, more industrial in outlook because uh, we are not doing research on uh, we, are, we are not actually doing research we are using research we are using research output and uh, uh, making more of industrial products out of it so it's, it's i would say it's more like a implementation of research rather than uh, actually doing research what where you currently work okay. uh, what uh, you know what is your uh, uh, what all have you studied to reach this position maybe and what your experience has been Uh, so i'm i'm originally from mumbai uh, but in 2010 i i started uh, doing my bachelor's in electronics and communications engineering at mit manipal uh, after that i uh, went on to work at hero motor corp for uh, about a year in fact less than a year uh, i really did not enjoy my job there it was something that even it was like an untrained technician kind of job uh so i did not really see my the value of my engineering degree there so i decided to go do my masters uh so i initially uh i had done an internship in poland before uh, during my bachelor's so that's when i was kind of fascinated with europe i uh, wanted to study here so i decided to look for some colleges here uh, ended up in tu eindhoven in the netherlands uh it's in the south of the netherlands and uh, eindhoven is supposed to be one of the smartest regions in the world because of large number of patent output and uh, like the entire high tech industry here uh, the netherlands high tech industry is kind of based in eindhoven uh so after doing my masters i did my masters in systems and control uh under the mechanical and the electrical engineering departments uh so that kind of pushed me a little bit more into mechatronics and after my mechatron uh, after my masters i decided to do the pd eng in uh, mechatronic systems so phd sir pd eng here in the netherlands is almost like you are you are employed at the university and you are doing the project for the university so phd is are doing a research project either for the university or an industrial uh, a company and we are also doing projects for the same thing but more in an application oriented way rather than a scientific research that sounds very interesting actually yeah. um, and and then uh, that means that uh, you're not necessarily expected to uh, maybe contribute uh, in terms of papers in all these international publications but more like completion of projects and those are the things that you would have yeah, to but, focus uh, on in the, the pdf the thing is yes the thing is uh, the kind the technical industry in the netherlands is a little bit on a, a high level scale a extremely complex scale mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. in in eindhoven we are manufacturing machines uh, like the photolithography machines which are actually uh, are actually etching uh, semiconductors on silicon wafers for the computer chip So the yeah that's uh, very interesting because i always wondered who makes these machines right so glad yeah, so, to so, know that yeah uh, the the company which i am currently working for called asml uh, is kind of the world leader in manufacturing these kind of machines and they they are they they hold i think 80% of the market or something so if you have a smartphone most likely the the chip in the smartphone has come out from that uh, 
uh, from an ASML machine. So uh, the kind of mechatronics that we do is kind of very much pushed by science. So there's a lot of physics and chemistry and uh, a lot of mathematics that goes into all these things. So uh, the projects that we have that also requires a little bit of research. So we are looking at research papers. We are looking at what people have done theoretically and we're trying to put that into more of a, a applicate, an application uh, rather than it, it, it's, it's not something that is very, very much different from a PhD. But I understand. Than, I understand. Yeah. Okay. So it's basically, if I have to explain it, uh, it would be like it's very high tech, and you would use a lot of uh, the leading uh, edge science in it. Uh, but at the same time, it's not a traditional PhD in the sense uh, uh, you're not trying to uh, do new. Uh, research into new uh, let's say uh, uh, exactly. techniques we are, we are or findings not, or it's not, not experiments any, it's not yeah. experiments right? we are not producing any research output of our own okay cool that's kind of the thing and it's two years other than the four years for the phd interesting so uh, uh, so uh, maybe because uh, i know folks here are interested in studying abroad especially maybe netherlands let mm -hmm. me ask a related question which will also help the question that they were asking yeah so this uh, p uh, pd eng is it only netherlands that offers this because i don't think i've heard of us or uh, let's say maybe australia or anybody offering this kind of thing when maybe i was looking uh, the Netherlands offers this, only the Netherlands offers this. Uh, the British, they have a similar thing called a doctorate in engineering, a DEng or something like that. Uh, and it's considered equivalent to that. Our degree is considered equivalent to that degree. So uh, the, the PDEng, the Nether Dutch PDEng is accepted in the UK and their degree is accepted. So basically what happens is once we graduate from this, we are kind of enrolled in the Dutch Royal Society of Engineers kind of thing. So oh, similarly, in the, in the in the UK, they have the Royal Society of Engineers there. So it's kind of the same thing, but the names are different. Cool, cool. That that's a great uh, introduction to you know yes. you and what you've done, and even uh, the uh, basically the Dutch uh, uh, PD Eng system, right? Yeah. So uh, let's finally get to the questions that uh, they they the the students are reaching to know. Where is it better to study, right? Uh, India, uh, Europe, US, uh, where do you do your masters? And do you even consider doing, you know, a further degree and things like that? So for starters, there are, there are kind of two reasons you want to go abroad. So you either want to work abroad or you want to pursue research abroad. So for, if you want, if you want to go abroad to do research, then I think the best thing is for you to look at the places which have the funding for what you want to do. So you'll have to do a little bit more homework there and go through the websites and stuff uh, to find out what, 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 are, what kind of research labs do they have, what kind of funding do they have, what kind of output they are producing. So that, that's the first thing if you are interested in pursuing research. Uh, secondly, if you're pursuing, uh, if you want to do a job, I think it depends upon you because the working cultures of European countries and the working culture in the US is extremely different. So uh, I, I do not think that I would necessarily, uh, I would I would necessarily feel the same way if I'm working if I was working for an American company right now. So how is it different? All right. Um, so, uh, so, so you're looking at this whole, do you study abroad from a job perspective and, and from research perspective? I think you, right? should, you need to have a basic idea about uh, mm -hmm. these kind of things before you go to do a master's abroad. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's say if somebody just wants to work abroad, right, mm -hmm. then what is the strategy they should use? And uh, how will, let's say, a, a further studies um, uh, endeavor in, let's say, Netherlands help for somebody who wants to work there afterwards? Like just do a master's and work there. How, how is that? Can you describe okay. more about the situation and what, you know, uh, people need to do in that scenario? Uh, 
so the thing is again this is some slightly different because the, there's a difference in the lifestyle in the us and the and europe so if you if you are you have the sole purpose of earning lots of money then i think the us is a better option for you because yeah the salaries are very high there like i, I, I am currently in the netherlands i'm not uh, earning that much as my colleagues in the us but on the other hand my life feels a little bit more safe here in terms of i have my my money that my i'm that i'm paying in high taxes is going towards healthcare it's going towards uh, providing unemployment benefits if i somehow get unemployed it's going towards providing a lot of other securities which you won't get in the us so then you it, it, it again depends upon what what are you looking for so i do not really have a fixed answer for this i see okay so uh, you answered the the money question so let me yeah. ask a slightly different question maybe somebody sure. would have right like what if you know they they want to enter uh, an exciting industry and they want to have good quality of work they want to do good work and as well as have a comfortable lifestyle uh, in that case europe certainly seems ideal uh for that kind of thing right and as you mentioned eindhoven uh has a lot of other technological uh companies over there uh so uh, i would think that uh, netherlands or europe is a good good um uh, place to go if if you want work life balance as well as you know uh, to be able to do good quality work right oh yeah i i i am certainly extremely happy about my work life balance so i my contract says that i am supposed to work 40 hours a week and my superiors my bosses they expect me to work only 40 hours a week so you know once they realize that i'm overworking they tell me to stop and take a day off or something like that. and i i am able to take like days off if i feel overworked without my pay getting cut so these kind of things there's a lot of uh, importance given to work life balance here i'm not, i cannot say this i'm not sure about the us to be honest regarding the work life balance but here in the netherlands especially there's a lot of importance given okay very interesting so what uh, uh, what uh, uh, companies which you know you probably you know when you were graduating and all that you you probably were looking out for jobs and stuff like that so could you give an idea about somebody who's graduating from mechatronics uh, be it a, a masters or a, a post uh, you know uh, not sorry not post doc but a pd eng kind of a, a degree what yeah. um, what kind of companies are there that they can apply to and work in uh so in the netherlands we have these three major areas so we have uh we have uh, the area of amsterdam which is in the north of the netherlands uh, the amsterdam area is known for uh, financial companies uh, there are, there are lots of financial companies there it's also got the schiphol airport which is the the kind of the biggest international airport in the netherlands and uh, that area is also known for uh, kind of revolutionary technology in the the air, airport management kind of stuff uh going south we've got rotterdam which is the biggest port in europe uh and rotterdam is again known for technologies that go into uh management of massive ports and container ships and uh, uh managing all the traffic around them so so that, a so, lot of heavy machinery and all that they manufacture yeah so so in i know in the netherlands we we know these three things there are three these three major kind of ports so we got the airport in amsterdam we got the the sea port in rotterdam and eindhoven in the other hand is known as the brain port because we got a lot of high tech companies and we got a lot of companies that surround these things so let me give you an example one i think the most famous one in the netherlands uh in in eindhoven the biggest one is asml so it manufactures this massive massive semiconductor manufacturing machines and these machines uh, they are sold to companies uh, in china taiwan for uh, like samsung apple and all this uh, intel and all these small big companies and these machines cost like 200 to 500 million euros so per wow. machine 
Wow. So it's it's a massive massive machine which uh, takes kind of years to manufacture. So there are a lot of supporting companies working on that. So we have these massive mechatronics modules which are outsourced to another company. They manufacture that, uh, and so the entire kind of industry is based on that. The second biggest uh, industry that we have is mechatronics in healthcare products. So Philips is a big company. It was kind of founded in Eindhoven itself. Uh, they are now headquartered in Amsterdam, but they have a lot of research and technology happening in Eindhoven. So uh, they, they manufacture um, all kinds of uh, MRI machines and uh, X-ray machines. Uh, they also manufacture even smaller uh, consumer products like uh, shavers and trimmers. So they, they have an incredible amount of mechatronics going into those as well. Uh, the last I remember they were uh, doing, uh, my, I, I knew a colleague was working on a massive team doing research on breast pumps to uh, pump milk out. And uh, they were also doing some kind of a laser hair removal thing again, which includes a lots of lots of design and lots of electronics. Very interesting uh, to see that you know uh, Netherlands is actually this low key you know high tech manufacturing hub that one ne never really hears too much about, right? U.S. Yeah. and China are always making noise about okay they are the you know uh, high tech hubs or something like that, but uh, you know quietly. Uh, you know, Netherlands has been manufacturing for a long time all these high-tech equipment, which the yeah. rest of the world buys in order to make more technology, right? That's very yeah. interesting. You know, the the cool. interesting part about that here is that uh, uh, you must have heard of Moore's law, right? The, the, the law that kind of predicts right. that the number of transistors in a chip doubles every 18 to 20 months. So, uh, ASML is a company that is kind of holding the benchmark towards Moore's law. They are the ones kind of pushing it ahead because they are the ones who are making machines that can make semiconductors, make transistors even smaller. Right, right. Very uh, interesting because photolithography so, would determine the like the channel width, etc. Yeah, right? and, and, uh, and right. uh, I think one of the good parts about working in the semiconductor industry is because I, I think it kind of runs a bit ahead of the rest of the uh, rest of the markets. So right now they're working on a machine which will probably sell 10 years from now. Wow, that so, is very interesting. So is that going is, to break the Moore's law? I mean, you know. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not really sure because while we see that the rest of the companies around the Eindhoven are kind of hired freezing because of COVID-19, we see that ASML is strictly hiring. Oh, nice. So, so, so yeah, it's, it's a slightly strange because they kind of run kind of detached from the rest of the markets here. Yeah, like you said, they're a leading edge company in the sense yeah. what they manufacture now uh, or start manufacturing now will be sold in another 5-10 years. So they don't have to worry about what's happening now. They're more concerned about what's going to happen in the next decade, right? So that makes quite a lot of sense.